Hey everyone, did you know that you can use ML.NET and Python? So far, I've done ML.NET and C Sharp and Visual Studio, but in this video, I'm going to show how you can use ML.NET and Python in a Jupyter Notebook. And to do this, there's actually a package that we need to download to be able to use this, and it's called Nimbus ML. If you don't have it, you can run this in a Jupyter Notebook with an exclamation point and do pip install Nimbus ML. Now I already have this installed, that's why it says requirements are already satisfied. Now let's do some imports here. First thing I'm gonna import is pandas, as we'll be using that to manage our data and clean it up a little bit. Next I'll import Nimbus ML and I'll do a linear model. And I'll import the fast linear regressor now, that'll be the algorithm that I'll be using. Next, I'll be import a couple of things from scikit-learn. I'll import the metrics. I'll do the R2 score here. I'll use that as a metric. Then I'm going to import the test train split method, or train test split. I always get that confused. All right, so with the imports done, let's read in our data. I'll use pandas read CSV. I'm going to use the housing data that we've done in the past, and we'll take a peek at it here. Like usual, we have stuff like a median house range, total rooms, and all that, and we'll be predicting the median house value. So with our data loaded, let's get a instance of the fast linear regressor. Now, if you've done scikit-learn, this API with Nimbus ML is going to be very familiar to you. It's almost the same. And since we have this ocean proximity here, I'm going to get the dummies using pandas. I'll give it the column of ocean proximity. Now I want to use the, actually let, let's take a peek at this to see what this did. If you're not familiar with the get dummies method here, so we have the ocean proximity, which is a categorical variable here, and it has a few items in it. The dummies is what it does is each item in it gets its own column, and wherever that item is in the row, it sets it to one. So all these near bays are one, everything else is zero. Next, I'm going to call the train test split method, but I'm going to take out the label column of our data set. And the newer versions of Pandas has this pop method. And I'll do the median house value. And what this does is that it takes out this column into its own variable. And in our data frame, you notice that the median house value is no longer there. So for the test, the train test split method, we'll get four items as a tuple. And we just unpack them here. We get the training data frame and the testing data frame, as long as the training label values and the test label values. I pass in the data frame without the label, and I pass in the label series. Then I'm gonna give it a test size of 0 0.2, 20 percent as my test size. All right, and we'll use that fast regressor from Nimbus ML and will fit on our data here in our training data. There we go. And it gives us our algorithm here, including each of the hyperparameters. And we can get predictions on it using our test set, using the predict method and pass in our test items. And then we call it R2 score on it we pass in the true items which would be the watt test and then the predictions but if you notice here we get an error and it says the input contains nan infinity or a value too long large for floats so what happened here so let's go back to let's see our predictions all that looks okay but let's do uh, let's check is null and then get a sum of all the 
items that are is null. So we get 36 items that are actually null here. So Nimbus ML actually, when you fit on it, it takes in null values. But when you use something from scikit-learn, like the R2 score, it doesn't like null values. So what we can do instead is up here, after we read in the data, and let's read it in again here. We can do that is null and sum again. So it goes through all the columns and it says 207 rows of total bedrooms are null. And the simplest way we can fix this is to drop all the null values. And this drops all the rows that have null values in it. And then we can just go back through here, fit it once again on the new data, get new predictions. You see, do we have any null values? No null values. Now you run an R2 score again and then it works. Now we get about 65% of our R2. So there is some feature engineering that we can do to help improve this. But I'll end things there. I just wanted to show that you can run ML.net using Nimbus ML there. And also to show that it's pretty much the same as a scikit-learn API. If you're familiar with that, you'll definitely be familiar with Nimbus ML. All right, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.